The TFL Off-Road Ineos Grenadier Series is brought to you by Magna, makers of high-quality technology and parts for the next generation of cars and trucks, including the Grenadier. Hey guys, welcome to our next episode in our INEO series. And as you know, we've taken it off-road, we've taken it on-road, but there's one thing we haven't done, Nathan. That's right, we haven't taken it through a car wash with all the windows open yet. <laughs> no, we haven't done that. What I'm talking about, of course, is we have not overlanded it. What this is naturally built for, not rock crawling, not mudding, but actually long distances in beautiful scenery across spectacular parts of the world, and in this case, Moab, Utah, because we're here at Chicken Corners. That's right, this is the second time we've actually gotten this vehicle to Moab, Utah, and now we have an opportunity to really stretch its legs. The Inyos, conceived in a drunken stupor on a, oh wait a minute, reading notes here, do not to mention the bar, do not mention anything. We're not gonna mention any of that. We're just gonna talk about what the vehicle actually is. <laughs> That's right, Nathan. I think people are pretty tired of hearing the backstory, but this is a body on frame vehicle from a brand new manufacturer. It's got solid axles. These tires, Nathan, the KO2s, yeah, that's right. And it also has a BMW engine and transmission, right? Yeah, ZF transmission, and it was developed in a large part by Magna. They are the folks that tune the engine and the transmission and the Tremec transfer case and the frame and suspension. So Magna is a partner on this series, and they do great work. If you guys want to build your own car, give Magna a call. They'll help you with it. <laughs> but Nathan, essentially, this is the spiritual successor to the old school Defender, except it has nothing, nothing in common in terms of part interchangeability. Right, but it looks a lot like it, doesn't it? It sure darn does, Nathan. So guys, what does this uh, truck remind you of? Uh, well, obviously, a Datsun. No, a Defender. <laughs> a Defender, that was the other guess. And it is old school, look, it still has a key, uh -huh. like a Defender. Or a Datsun. Or a Datsun. <laughs> See? Yep, yep, and a uh, keyhole. But it's got a BMW engine, like we said, which is weird. Uh, but it does have dual horns, Nathan. So there's this regular horn, right, which um, is there. Yeah. Or he's got the toot horn. <laughs> is that a European thing? Where if you hit the big horn, you're saying something really bad, like bollocks, and then they hit the little one, it's like, please move out of the way. Is that how it works? <laughs> it could, I like that. And the coolest thing is it's got this little off-road mode. So I push this button up here, uh -huh. and then I hit it again, and then it turns on off-road mode. Uh, and what off-road mode does is a bunch of cool things, and this is something that I wish every vehicle did. For instance, you can now drive with your seatbelt off. Which really does help in certain off-road situations. Yeah, if you're going out and checking out, you know, the obstacle in front of you, it's always a pain. You gotta hop in and out of the vehicle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Not that I'm gonna do it right now, but it is nice. So you can drive without it off, without it buzzing. It also, of course, deactivates all of the sensors. So, so no parking sensors are screaming at you. Exactly, what else does it do, Tommy? Well, it also deactivates the backup camera. That's kind of weird. It's kind That's of strange. unfortunate, yeah. But it also puts the ESC into an off-road setting, which allows a little bit more wheel slip. Yeah, that makes sense. And it allows you to turn on the inboard grill lights, which is pretty cool, only for off-road use, and it cuts out at about 44 miles an hour. Okay, can you explain to me what the inboard grill lights mean? Well, Nathan, you remember when the Nissan Xterra had those lights on the roof? Yes. But there were only certain conditions you could use them in? Yeah, you could only do it like if you weren't in high beams or it something like, like that. It was like some, or the opposite, yeah. like you had to be in high beams. Well, kind of the same thing. They're not approved for road use, but oh. they are great when you're off-road. They're kind of an off-road light is really what they are, these bright LEDs. And in off-road mode, it allows you to turn them on. Ah. Let, let me simplify that. You know how the Mustang GT has those inside lights? It's not yeah. like that at all. It's like that. It's it is not it's like, that. like that. I love it when you guys agree. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I, I get it though. Tommy's explanation was excellent, especially by using the Xterra. Yeah, now, now watch Dad, the space. Let's talk about the um, <laughs> chassis in this vehicle. So, body on frame uh -huh. with solid axles made by a company called Carraro. Italian. With Italian, they do axles for tractors and for heavy machinery. These are some seriously heavy duty axles. And what I like about them too, is they went the old school Landover route where the pumpkins are offset to one side of the axle. So they're on my side or are they on his side? They're on the driver's side. Well, but once you know that. They're in line with each other, 
And because they're in line with each other, if you clear an obstacle in the front, you're most likely going to clear it in the rear, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah, really, really smart. It also has an off-road mode, which is nice. So it tells you your angle of pitch and tells you your tire temperature. It tells you all kinds of good stuff, which yep. is very useful. So I'll tip temperature of course altimeter um, uh, electrical let's see look yep. at that it tells you how much power we've got yeah it yeah. shows you the state of charge of the 12 volt and whether or not it's charging or discharging it also will tell you not only um, tire pressure tire temperature transfer case temperature and it will also tell you transmission temperature I like that and there's also a cool breadcrumbs mode as well so you can kind of find yourself um, but we would recommend Onyx yeah, Onyx Off-Road is our go-to off-road navigation software. Great point, Dad. Integrates with Apple CarPlay. That'll tell you how tough a trail is and what you're getting into. But the Ineo system will show you, if you're really lost, perhaps how to get back. So it's funny because uh, I think Onyx rates this as a 4. Uh, but here in Moab, they have uh, a trail ride and they rate it as a 2. It's pretty easy, Dad. But this is why we're out here in this trail. This is like a 42-mile long trail. And yes, you could bring a built-out Wrangler out here and it would be nothing. But it would also be very uncomfortable because this trail consists of a lot of smaller holes and medium-sized rocks that create a lot of back and forth motion. And how would you describe the ride in this vehicle, Nathan? It's actually better than I expected. I think part of that has to do with the very long wheelbase, considering you know the size of the vehicle overall. And I think it's dialed in. With that being said, I mean, there are softer vehicles out there by far, but I think this is a good trade-off. Yeah, like pickup trucks with longer wheelbases. Right, the, the longer that's why buses are so comfortable because by the time you hit the second, you know, set of wheels when you uh, hit the bump, um, you've forgotten about the first set hitting the bump. Uh, as long as the bus has weight in it. Yeah. What do you? What is this whole buses are so yeah, comfortable thing? Buses are that horrible. is pretty odd. What do you mean? They've had the, the best ride. Buses. Buses. Oh, look at that! I hit the. Uh, Have you got been driven that? back by the uh, airport <laughs> yeah. bus before you've ever? Been in a no. Lately no. No. It's a cabbage coaches. Cart. Like right, like a Greyhound coach with people no, no, in no, it no, that no, it rides nice. Greyhound coach <laughs> when they're like Nathan? puking all over no, you. No, like 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 a tour bus. You know, the, 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 a proper long coach. They have the best rides. Of because anything. they have air suspensions. They just fl no. It's because they have a very long wheelbase. Oh, I don't know well, that. that. When I think of comfort, I don't think of a bus. I think of a Mercedes S Class limousine. And well, limousine. Dad, limousine would have been one. Limousine is a good one. Yeah, Once again, go. long wheelbase. Right. Yeah, but but, that, but that. it's not a bus. <laughs> it's it doesn't it's have a hundred drunk example. people. I, on. I, I, I'm, once again, I'm on Tommy's side. <laughs> Sorry, Roman. But this is a coil sprung solid axle vehicle, so it's still not as soft as something like a Land Rover Defender, the new one that has air suspension and four corner independent suspension. Right. But it's pretty good. I think it. Once again, I think the trade off is quite good, and this thing has proven to be pretty rugged. Uh, Roman's done some in interesting articulation. It's done just fine. But what it really likes I think is it likes to stretch its legs on this type of terrain where you've got swoopy you know dirt mud and some rock it just absolutely eats it up yeah but it doesn't have for instance uh, a disconnectable sway bar which yeah. would make the ride better which is interesting because I think the front doesn't have as much articulation as I would like that's well, a great point yeah so going over the hard terrain having a disconnectable sway bar would really help but for a majority of the terrain this thing is really meant for Overlanding, I think it's fine. Well, it also has a couple other things that overlanders love. First of all, a ton of payload, Tommy. Yeah, it's got a lot of payload. I think it's 1,500 pounds in this configuration, Dad. Yep, and then the, the roof has a lot of uh, weight that it can hold as well. So we just installed a ladder thanks to one of our viewers who sent it to us. And guess what? The ladder itself, Nathan, mm. has a capacity of over 300 pounds. Good, I can actually use it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you can both use it. Yeah, and at the, the static, same time. <laughs> static load on the, on the roof is like... 900 pounds then yeah and the the moving load is like 330 so pretty good but what i really makes this feel like a good overlander is because there's no integrated roll cage in here like a bronco or a wrangler you've got a huge amount of space this yeah it's just, really airy isn't it it's an enormous amazon box so it really has a lot of space oh dad i gotta get the camera out we got some jeepers you want to pull over here and let them go past I'll pull over here there you go good timing actually there's a lot of them. That's the, that's the line. Yeah. Those are the guys. Give us like 20 to 25 minutes and we'll cut back on camera.
Well guys, probably what you don't know is that while all those Jeeps were going by, we had lunch. Yeah, it was perfect timing. There's like 50 of them that passed by, so we were able to eat a whole lunch. You know, and as much as I love the Wrangler, Nathan, let's face it, as an overlanding rig, it's got a little bit to be desired, right? Because that sports bar or roll cage takes up a lot of room, and when you're overlanding, space is at a premium. It's one of the reasons why I think the Gladiator is a great candidate for something that you want to convert into an overlander. It has more capacity, more room. Uh, yeah, it's a lot longer, so you don't want to go hardcore off-roading, but it works really well, I think, as a potential overlanding vehicle. So our, our friend Scott Brady, who runs the Overland Journal, actually drove this thing across Africa. Yeah, this yeah, thing. This thing, yeah, this thing right here. Uh, and then we have some other friends who drove it up uh, to Alaska on the trans... Uh, what's that race called, Tommy? The, the Alaska race? Oh, I don't remember, Dad. The Iditarod. No, no, not, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they hooked up some, uh, some dogs, dogs to it. And yeah. the dogs pulled it, right? <laughs> I got all the answers today. But, but you know, it was designed by an overlander for overlanding. And I think that they've done an extremely exceptional job with that. My only, like, my only concern is uh, the seats are a little bit firm. They are, and the price is a little firm. And the price is <laughs> very firm. firm. Yeah, the price is very firm. What do you think, Tommy? Well, I think a couple other things we need to talk about. First of all, towing capacity. The most you can tow in a Wrangler or a current 4Runner is 5,000 pounds, where this will tow nearly 8,000 pounds, which is a lot. Still not as much as the new Lexus GX, though, which can tow up to 9,000 pounds. So that has even more capability. This vehicle is also available with a dual battery group, so you can buy it with a second battery underneath the seat, and it has places around the vehicle that's pre-tapped for electrical accessories, which is really awesome, and then you use the overhead switches to flick them on. So there's a lot of nifty features in this vehicle. But as Nathan mentioned, that price really is gonna be the big deterrent. 71 and 71, 5, 72 starting. I don't think you're gonna get anyone to get that price. No, this one's about 80. Yeah. With uh, the locking diffs and the snorkel and the diamond plating and the rock rail. So uh, it is a very pricey vehicle. And of course that Lexus, that's also gonna be a pretty awesome contender in this space. Yeah, but here's the thing, Tommy. The design of this from the get-go was to go overland and to go off-road and unlike the Lexus I don't feel bad about taking this off-road I think that to me is the biggest difference right you get a G-Wagon you could take that off-road but it feels very expensive and in some ways very precious right you want to get the thing ceramic coated this to me feels like it's meant to be out here and that's a huge uh, psychological thing that you need when you're you know off-roading expensive cars don't you think it's the same thing though with the GX Overtrail no I don't think so I think that comes out of a very fancy schmancy uh, dealership, you know. It's cheaper though. Mm -hmm. It's not the cost of the money, it's the mindset of the vehicle. And this to me says, take me off road, whereas Alexa says, take me to the opera. I don't know, uh, I disagree. I think you're still in the bus zone. Yeah, I think. Yeah, <laughs> I, I really did. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have, you, have you never been on a coach? <laughs> yes, they're not funny. They are very uncomfortable. No, no, they're not. They're either in the back of the thing. They're right. No, no, no. I'm not talking about an airport bus. I'm talking about a coach. An inner city bus. No, I'm, I'm talking about LA Unified School buses. Maybe in all my life, they were horrible. <laughs> they, they glide across. Guys, help me out. Come on in the comments below if you've been on a. Because uh, it's it's a good point, Nathan. Because foreign diplomats from all over the world travel around in buses. That's what they'd like yeah, over they, uh, limousines, they, absolutely. They never yeah. use limousines, nope. only buses. That uh, Toyota Crown was never used in <laughs> Japan. <laughs> Nathan, this is kind of one of the more interesting uh, markers along the way to Chicken Corners. Yeah, we, we're at a solemn grave site, Roman. Yeah, so uh, Joseph Hills Johnson, Moab Cattleman, and Chief Deputy Sheriff, born December 22nd, 1895, died at this spot on December 30th, 1927. Because of a horse. I think so. I think he, he, either the horse's leg was broken or his leg was broken. One of those two, and he could not make it back. He should have had a car. He should have had a car. So yeah, it puts things into perspective, doesn't it? It does put things into perspective. Have you noticed all the stuff that people have left? I mean, there's a lot. Well, there's even a sheriff's badge. Yeah. Out. Look, if we have a sheriff. We have You're going to be cursed if you keep that. By the way. Yeah, no, no, I'm not going to keep You're it. Gonna... A lot of bullets. A lot of, yep. I mean, big bullets. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's, yeah. there's, yeah, there's some, some interesting. A lot of money left behind. I'm, I'm guessing that the BLM collects this because they certainly don't get paid enough. <laughs> so. Oh, wait, can of beer. It, yep, in, in honor of the... Um, 
management here and also of uh, Mr. Uh, Johnson. I'm gonna leave a prepaid Visa card here. <laughs> Bring it into the modern century, right? All these well, dollar bills are gonna blow away. This is all about TFL being, you know, giving back a little bit. But in all honesty, guys, if you're out here, this is really cool to see. It's worthwhile seeing, but please don't put your trash here. And if you, if you saw that number on there on the camera, don't spend it. It's, it's, it's a solemn grave, please. Please. Oh, this one's not even doing the squeaky. Yeah, see? Chicken corners, Nathan. I'm choking a chicken. <laughs> right. I did that on camera. All right, uh, this is, I'm, I'm now I'm talking to you, our friends at Lexus. Uh, <laughs> if you found what I said objectionable, which I could see these guys found, please loan us a GX and let me take it out here to chicken corners and I'll change my mind. Fair? I, I just, I don't have anything to say about that. And Tommy, who's behind the camera, is about to throw it at his father. So here's the important part. Also, Toyota fans, we love you. So, <laughs> the, I do agree, though, that the Ineos is a wonderful vehicle, although a bit pricey. Look, there, like I said, there are things on this, on this truck, and it is a truck, it's body on frame, right? The drive me like that, that speed sensor thing would keep me from buying it, especially if you Oh, well, explain that. Yeah, so what it does is, if you exceed the speed limit, it beeps incessantly and then you have to turn it off and then when you turn off the truck turn it back on it comes back on every time and then if you have apple carplay going you can't really find where that feature is because apple carplay takes over the screen and i spent a saturday pulling my hair out driving that thing around town so this is perfect no speed limits <laughs> so i guess my my takeaway would be if you're gonna take your nes off road like 90 percent of the time go for it yeah yeah otherwise pull your hair out because buy Lexus. <laughs> <laughs> possibly, possibly. So in the near future, hopefully, we'll be able to test the GX maybe in similar conditions. Stay and tuned for that. And certainly the Land Cruiser. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. See you guys next time. Ciao.